In this video, we're going to go ahead and create a mesh to take the place of our gun inside of our game. We're going to use the geometry editing pen tool in order to make this, and then we're going to adjust it a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started. So, as everything in this example is running inside the editor, so we can learn without using any external tools, we need to actually get a mesh in here that looks like a gun. No, one thing that's kind of cool is you can use BSP brushes to block out things and then turn them into meshes. Or you can actually draw your own mesh. So we're going to go into the geometry editing section up here under modes, and we're going to use the pen tool. Here's one thing that's important here. Go ahead and under extrude depth, and let's move this to 10 so we don't have a very thick gun. Other than that, you can keep your settings at default. Now, in order to use the pen tool, basically you draw a profile image of that item, and then it's going to extrude it out on the depth that you're not looking at, basically forward from your direction, and give you a result. So let's change our view here from perspective to right. And let's go ahead and draw ourselves a small little gun. In order to do this, we basically move our mouse to where we want to start. We press the space key to drop our first point. We move to our next point, space key, move down, space key. Let's go back here, space key. Now this time I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little bigger handle. And we'll continue all the way around pressing the space key until we get our result. If we go back to our perspective view and we find our box brush, we can hit F to focus or you can look around for it. We actually have our gun and we're going to go ahead and use this. It may not be the right size. We're going to fix that inside of our mesh itself in the mesh inside of our blueprint itself. But for now, we wanted our shape. Once you have your actual box brush, we need to turn it into our mesh. If we click on the brush itself. Once we go to select select matching matching brush we now have the entire brush selected from there we can go to our advanced menu under brush settings so brush settings this little drop down and then we have create static mesh we hit create static mesh it's going to ask us where to place it and name it we'll call this one our gun mesh without the space assuming i can there we go and we'll put it in our meshes folder we created earlier and we'll create a static mesh. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and delete our box brush because I forgot it before and it's really scary to turn around and see this giant brush staring you in the face. We'll go back to meshes and we'll find gun mesh. If we open up our gun mesh, we will find, well, what we just created, a basic simple <laughs> mesh that looks like a gun. Now it doesn't have a material. Let's quickly slap a material onto it. We'll go back into our map. Materials, we'll create a new material. We'll call this one the gun mat. We will properly, hopefully, capitalize the T, which of course is annoying. So we'll add an extra T. We'll go back in there, we'll hit the smaller T. There we go. Now we have our gun material. And we're just going to do this really simple. We're going to hold down three and click so we can do a constant three for a vector. We'll drop this into our base color. We'll go ahead and open this up. We'll do a little bit lighter of a color, maybe something like that, a silver. Go ahead and OK. We'll apply this and let it compile. We'll save it. And then we have our nice gun material with this silverish color. If we go to back to our gun mesh, and we go to our material here and do gun mat, now we have our basic simple color. We can take our mesh, drag it into our scene, and this is what our gun is going to look like. We can adjust it later, but that's basically what we wanted. So let's go ahead and put it inside of our player. We'll go back to our player and our VR pawn, and we're going to go ahead and set it up. Now I'm personally right-handed. I'm going to replace my right-handed mesh with my gun, and I'm going to get rid of my left one. If you're left-handed, feel free to switch it around. Let's go ahead and delete the cube from our left controller, but we'll go ahead and leave our left controller here. Now, if you're not going to track it, you should probably remove it. But we have a lightweight game, and we're using this for example purposes. Maybe we'll use it later. 
So we'll go ahead and leave it in. Our right controller sphere is what we care about here. Now when you created a sphere, all it did was create a static mesh and then add it on a default static mesh. This is not only a sphere. If we were to go ahead and rename this to the gun, um, gun mesh, I guess, you'll find it's now called gun mesh static mesh component. And over here, if we click on it and go to details, we'll find the static mesh that's assigned to it, change it to our gun mesh, and change our material over to the gun material. Hit save and compile, and let's go ahead and see what we got. And we have our, assuming it'll let me, there we go. We have a really annoying thing to scroll in on. We have our gun attached to our player and our camera. Now it's obviously not rotated properly. That's easy enough. We will find our gun mesh and rotate it. Now if you have a problem like I do now where you cannot move and rotate things, I really don't know why this happens. Sometimes things will get locked. Like I cannot rotate right now. What you want to do is just compile and save, close down the pawn, open it back up, go back to your gun mesh directly, there we go, and then go ahead and you can rotate. I don't know why that happens. You'll also notice my scale was set to 0.1 because the original scale of the sphere I replaced was 0.1. You might want to just reset that. Let's type in 90 for a rotation on the Z. And keep in mind, you want to keep it at zero for your location because it's going to be offset by your hand. Let's compile and run this and see what it looks like in game. Let's grab our headset and our controller and check it out. So we have a small issue here. I'm not getting anything happening. If I grab my other controller, well, now it's working. My left and right controllers are actually switched inside of my game. And that's something you will run into as an issue. You need to keep that in mind. With the way the Vive works, you have a left and a right hand that's assigned based on which controllers you turned on, in the order you turned it on, and as well as if you're, which direction you're facing when you turn it on. If you're facing your origin position, your startup position, and you um, turn on your controllers while facing that direction, it assigns based on what's in your left and right hand, based on the HMD position. Because I'm not, my controllers are all funky. Let me go ahead and shut off both my controllers. Assuming it's going to let me. Let's see, one controller. And hold down the other one, shut off my other controller. At this point, you can probably shut off both of your controllers because you will no longer be using them and just turn on your single controller that you plan on using. And let's go ahead and run this again. And you'll notice I have nothing assigned because my headset thinks this is my left controller. So for debugging purposes, and of course you can do whatever you want, I'm just going to go ahead and move my gun mesh over to my left controller and hit play. And even though it says it's my left controller, oh, this is just so annoying, I hate this it's still going to work perfectly fine on my right hand side. Now if you notice I have this mesh and it is huge. Let's go and resize that. So depending on the size of the mesh you made and depending on the shape of it is going to determine your scaling. Obviously in a real game you're going to want to use something more realistic looking or more appropriately sized. But for our example, let's try point two. Hit play and see what our gun mesh looks like now. Hold it and feel. That's that's not bad. I apparently made that grip ginormous, but that's fine. Now, here's something that you need to be worrying about. Well, not worrying about, but this is what we're going to deal with. I'm holding the controller in what feels like a natural gun position. Because of the way it's angled, the top of the Vive is set to be flat where it is perpendicular to your ground. But because of that, you'll notice our gun is now angled up. You need to keep that in mind. So what we do in order to fix that is we just simply go in and we angle down our gun. I found approximately 40 degrees works well. If we go ahead and I went to our gun mesh and angle this down 40 degrees in the X, well, negative 40 technically, and I went play. Let's try this again. 
grab our headset and our gun. I'm holding it naturally again, but you'll notice now the gun looks like it's facing more towards a forward position. This is something that is very specific to you, the developer, and your player. The feel of a gun in VR, the feel of anything in VR is very tricky to get right. I'm using a gun in this example because it's a standard feature and something most of people can relate to even if they've never held one. So what feels right to you is how you should set it up. Maybe I want to drop the angle down another one or two degrees. Maybe I want to make it a little wider so it feels better. Whatever you want. For example, I'm going to go ahead and just drop it down 40 degrees. This seems okay. I might drop it down one or two more later. It's personal preference. But if you notice, I can move my gun. I can turn it 360 degrees in my hand. Hopefully I don't drop the controller. I can look up and down. I can push buttons, but nothing happens. That's something we're going to work on in the next section. So that is going to wrap up this video. We went ahead and we created a simple gun mesh inside of Unreal Engine itself. We set it up to replace our existing controller mesh and we adjusted it so it feels a little bit more natural. In our next video, basically we're going to set up a line trace from our gun. We're going to test it out and we're going to have it where when we pull the trigger, it fires off our line trace.